Hello, my brother. Welcome to the Great Man Within podcast. Every episode designed to help you discover and live the great man within you. A few years ago, I picked up a really clever book called Daily Rituals, How Artists Work, and it's written by Mason Curry. It's a collection of 161 of the world's greatest creatives, artists, thinkers, and luminaries that the world has ever known, and their daily rituals. So people like Beethoven, Mozart, Benjamin Franklin, Kierkegaard, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Arthur Miller, Sigmund Freud, Carl Jung, all of them have like one to two page stories about how they structured their days, how they were productive, how they became efficient, but also how they became really creative. One of the key themes that seems to pop up with almost every luminary that I resonate with is their love of coffee and how they use coffee to stimulate their creative thinking. So anytime someone comes along and tries to convince me, convince me that matcha or green tea is the way to go, not having it, people. The greatest of all time relied on coffee, and I'm down with that game. Bulletproof every single morning for me. Thank you very much. Now, the book I just pulled off the shelf recently, and I flipped to the very first page, and there's an the number one person that's featured in the book, or the first person that's featured in the book, is a poet who I've never heard of. His name is W.H. Auden. Now, I don't know if this is a guy who flies under the radar, if that's simply an indictment on my well-rounded nature of knowing poets, poets and artists. But the way the book starts is with a simple quote by W.H. Auden. And it says, Routine in an intelligent man is a sign of ambition. Routine in an intelligent man is a sign of ambition. And I think that sets the stage for a lot of the book because even though these creatives and artists are wildly different in how they structured their days, some people were creative first thing in the morning and only worked for three hours. Some people didn't get to work until at the end of the day, late in the night, and they were drunk when they were creating some of their greatest works. Every single one of them seemed to have a process, a routine that they tapped into that worked for them, that produced some of their greatest works. I remember reading Stephen King's book, his memoir called On Writing, where he spoke about how every single day, from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., he sat behind his big desk for eight hours, and he would just pump out writing, and then that was it. He would finish at 2 p.m., whether he wrote 10,000 words or 1,000 words, that was his process, because he's like, if I show up every single day at that time, then I know the muse knows where he can find me. And that muse has shown up, I think, in about 50 or 60 bestsellers. The guy's just a machine. Every time he produces a work, it's an international and a national bestseller. So the power of routines is never more important than right now during a time where we are feeling less and less control over the world that we are operating in. The coronavirus era, uncertain. But what can we do to bring certainty and to fortify our inner foundation? How about a morning routine? The morning routine is the thing that I've seen has gone to hell for most people very quickly. The three key problems that I've seen people facing over these last few weeks is number one, keeping a positive mindset with all of this negative news. And it's not that you should always be positive, but it's like even the most optimistic of people are finding it difficult to find a ray of hope so number one, keeping a positive mindset has been difficult. Number two, feelings of isolation and feelings of suffocation for people who are just like constantly on top of each other, don't have space for themselves. And then number three, people's habits are becoming increasingly poor as we have moved our work from the workplace to home. Our mornings aren't starting the way we want them to. Our evenings are kind of going to hell. We're not eating or working out the way that we would want to. Not the case for everybody, but it seems like more and more people are struggling with this. The first place that I always point people to to stabilize is taking command of your morning routine. Because a powerful morning routine facilitates three things. Number one, a daily sense of control. Number two, Clarity, focus, and confidence throughout the course of the day. If you have a powerful morning routine, it brings a clarity to your day, a focus and a precision to what you're here to do, what your intention is, what's the most important thing, how do you want to show up. And that brings a confidence throughout the rest of the day. And your morning routine number three, 
brings fewer peaks and valleys over the course of the day. It smooths out these undulations, these high highs and these crashes and these lows when you have a routine that sets you up for the 16, 17, 18 waking hours that follow. Your morning routine is the rudder of your day, right? And your morning routine is responsible for the 16, 17, and 18 waking hours that follow. How much you produce, how powerful you feel, what kind of peace of mind and presence that you bring with you throughout the day. But the biggest challenges that I see that face people for developing a powerful morning routine is, number one, they've let their work get the best of them, right? So if you have a lot of work or your work is consuming you, you wake up and you dive right into your work and you are reactive throughout the course of the day responding to emails or to lesser things than maybe strategic thinking or something bigger than that. The second big thing I see is people are struggling with their kids in their home now. Like there's no space. Maybe kids are waking you up or kids are dependent on you. If you have kids, that seems to be not only a reality for a challenge to their morning routine, but I also see people scapegoating their kids when in, sometimes it's just a lack of creativity or potential discipline to committing to yourself. And I know that message can be confronting, but also I've seen that happen too. And the last thing is, is that people just don't have a plan for their morning routine, right? Like that's the big thing is like the big challenge to having a morning routine is not having a plan. <laughs> and most people have not consciously designed their morning routines or morning routines have happened to them. So what I want to do is I want to get you kind of clear on what is the quality of your morning routine, right? What is the quality of your morning routine? Does it bring you? clarity, focus, and confidence throughout the course of the day? Does it smooth out the peaks and the valleys? And I want to ask you 10 questions that can help you to get clear on how your day is setting you up. So number one, and I want you to really get clear on this. If you have a pen and a paper and you want to write this down or you want to pull out your notes on your phone, great. Question number one, do you have an intentionally designed morning routine? Have you ever spent time like designing it or has it just unfolded and happened to you? So this is really a yes or no question. Do you have an intentionally designed morning routine? Number two, do most of your days start feeling rushed, frenetic, chaotic, drinking from the fire hose? If most of your days start this way, chances are like you haven't designed a morning routine. Number three, are more and more of your days starting to feel like Groundhog's Day where every day wakes up, where you, every day you wake up, you start to feel the same. It unfolds the same, especially as we're in this quarantine era. Well, a morning routine properly designed can help you break free from that. Number four, do you have any personal space or time built just for you? Or from the moment that you wake up to the time you go to sleep, are you constantly responding to other people's needs? I did a presentation for a division of Delta Airlines last year. And after the keynote presentation, I had a chance to sit with a number of their wonderful employees. And there was a woman who sat at my lunch table and she said, Dominic, I love your concept of the morning routine, but you know, I have four kids and a husband. And as soon as I wake up in the morning, when I walk down the hallway, it wakes up the kids and then bang, it's like the race has begun and I have no time for myself. And she also has a full-time job, you know, so my heart went out to her and I was like, well, what would you ideally want in the morning. And she kind of closed her eyes and she was like, oh, I would love 10 minutes for myself with a cup of coffee. And I was like, what's preventing that from happening right now? She says, well, I have to like walk down the hallway and go to the kitchen. As soon as that happens, my kids wake up, they're light sleepers or whatever it is. And I was like, all right, well, how weird do you want? Like, how much do you want this? And she's like, I want it. I'm like, well, how weird are you willing to get for it? And she goes, well, what are you, what are you thinking? And I was like, let's put your coffee machine in your bathroom. I'm assuming you have a bathroom that's attached to your bedroom. She's like, yeah, I do. And I was like, well, start that. And so as it turns out, she decided to go for it. She put her coffee machine in her bathroom. And every morning for 10 minutes, she has a cup of coffee while sitting on the toilet. Not the most ideal of scenarios. But for her, it's been fun. It's been relaxing. And it's her, her own time. 10 minutes, precious minutes just for her before she has to respond to anyone else's needs. And that's been a game changer for her. So question number four is, do you have any personal time space built in the morning just for you? Question number five, is your cell phone your alarm clock? You've heard me bang this drum for, I think, over a year now. 
Studies have shown that if you remove your cell phone from your bedroom, you can reduce the amount of screen time you spend on your phone by up to 50% per day. Most people, I've asked this question on stages throughout the world over the last two or three years to over 10,000 people. Do you use your cell phone as your alarm clock? And about 80% of the hands in the audience raise their hand and say, yeah, of course. They don't even think about that. Well, when your cell phone is your alarm clock and your alarm goes off, typically you're buried in your emails, your text messages, social media, news before your feet even hit the floor. Your day has already disconnected immediately from your inter internal state and you're automatically connected and fire hosing yourself with external information. That, my friends, does not set you up for a day of clarity, focus, and confidence. That does not set you up for 16, 17, 18 hours of productivity, power, peace of mind, and presence. So if you're using your cell phone as your alarm clock, chances are you're sabotaging yourself from having a powerful day and a powerful morning routine. Question number six, do you immediately consume information first thing in the morning? And I just kind of hinted at this when as soon as you wake up, if you're automatically going to the outside world and consuming then you actually don't have a chance to stabilize and see what's going on inside of you. You're not charting the course for your day. You are unconsciously allowing the outside world chart the course for you. It's like you are a goalie just letting shots be fired at you all day long. Now, you can be great defending shots, but it's really hard to score from a goalie position, right? Are you automatically consuming from the first moment of the, the, like the first 15 minutes of you waking up in the day? Question number seven. Do you fuel your body in accordance with what's required of you over the next few hours? Do you fuel your body in accordance with what's required of you over the next few hours? Most people haven't consciously designed their intake and consumption of food in congruence with what is the next two or three or four or five hours asking of me. Certain days I will fuel, most days like when I'm at home, I'm just doing my bulletproof coffee in the morning, which is perfect for me for the next three or four hours. There are some days where I got to get on a stage and be presenting for like an hour or two. And those days require more caloric intake before I step on a stage. So I know what fuels my body physically, nutritionally for the performance that's required of me over the next few hours. And back in the day when I was in my 20s, no matter what was required of me that day, it was frosted flakes every single day for my 20s, or maybe like Reese's peanut butter puffs. That was like, I had cereal, I had like 10 boxes of cereal, and it was usually some sugar cereal that would leave me crashing somewhere around 10 o'clock in the morning. I never even thought about it. Never even consciously designed it until I understood the importance of how I fueled my body would lead to impacting my performance over the next few hours. So what's required of you and are you fueling yourself accordingly? Question number eight, do you know what your top priority for the day is? And is your day built to support its execution? Do you know your top priority for the day? And is your day built to support its execution? There's two parts to this question. Like, do you know the thing that is going to be the big win for your day? And if that's the case, then do you actually have time carved out? Do you have like an hour or two or 30 minutes or whatever it takes, four hours blocked on your calendar to do it? Where you're not going to allow someone's phone call or some breaking news interruption to take you off path. I'm shocked to find how many high performers, people who are super successful, don't actually know when they wake up that day, the thing that is going to contribute to a win. And they also haven't blocked their calendar accordingly to make sure that that will happen. So maybe they know what that thing is, but then they don't have the time blocked and they allow other people's needs to get in the way of that or smaller, lesser, trivial, more urgent things get in the way of that. And then constantly push the thing that was most important. Sometimes the thing that's most important is your work, but other times it's taking time for the person you love. It's taking time for your own physical well-being. It's time to take like that doctor's visit that you've been ignoring. Whatever that most important thing is for the day, do you know what it is? And is your day built to support that? I'm shocked to find how few people have their days scheduled that way. Number nine, do you often regret how you spent your last few hours the evening before? Do you often regret how you spent your last few hours the evening before? Are you waking up in the morning going like, oh shit, I wish I didn't have that fourth glass of wine. 
I wish I didn't watch those three extra episodes of Netflix. I wish I didn't sit in my bed and scroll through social media for an extra hour and a half past the time where I was really exhausted, but for some reason I couldn't bring myself to sleep. Are you waking up in the morning regretting what happened the night before? If that's the case, chances are you actually haven't developed a morning routine that like has really shown its benefits. And if you have a morning routine that is giving you benefits throughout the course of the day, it automatically starts to affect how you go to sleep the night before because you want to honor how you feel for the entirety of the next day. And question number 10, do you feel clear, confident, and in control as you step into each new day? I'm finding that right now, more and more people are saying, no, I don't feel like I'm clear about what I want to do today or what's required of me. I don't feel confident and I don't feel in control of my daily life. Well, the best way to start doing that is to start with designing your morning routine. And I'm going to give you three steps to to think about, like the three steps on how to design your morning routine. But the last place to go as we wrap up these 10 questions first would be asking yourself to rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. Based on those questions, on a scale of one to 10, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest, how would you judge and rate your morning routine right now? What would you give yourself? Are you a three? Are you a 10? And I would say like the way that you would want to rate that is the level of clear confidence and control you feel as you leave your morning. Give yourself a number. Now, what might be possible if that number were to be two points higher, three points higher? How would you feel? How much more clarity? How much more confidence? How much more control would you feel? How much more would you get done? How would you... How much more connected would you feel with the relationships or how much better of a leader would you be? These are all things. This is understanding where the juice is worth the squeeze. So if you have enough motivation now, like we've gotten through the why of why you need a morning routine, let's talk about the how. Three steps to design your morning routine. Number one, step number one, commit to carving out time for your morning routine, right? Commit to a time and how much time is going to be determined by you. Some of my super busy clients who think that they have absolutely no time whatsoever start with 10 minutes. And even the busiest of people who are running businesses of thousands of people who have kids at home, who have parents who need their help, can even find 10 minutes. Others have more freedom and flexibility like myself. You can commit maybe 30 minutes or 60 minutes. And it doesn't mean that you don't do work. It just means that like you actually carve out a particular period of time to structure it so that you feel you're in control and you get to choose what those first 10, 30, or 60 minutes look like consciously. Step number two is I want you to commit to a trial period for this morning routine. Meaning, let's put some real structure around, I'm going to design a morning routine and I'm going to do it for the next week. Seven days. I'm going to try this every single day for seven days. That feels good to me. Maybe you want something a little bit longer. How about one month? Maybe you're someone who likes to go a little bit longer. I'm going to do 90 days of a morning routine so I can see the benefits it brings to my life over a longer period of time. Whichever one feels most energizing to you, commit to a trial period because by doing this, it gives some energy, it gives some focus and structure and also enough time for you to experience some benefit. And then step number three, this is the third and final one, is how to design your morning routine. I'm going to quickly give you a few ideas but I would encourage you to go back to one of the earlier episodes that we did. I don't know exactly which episode it's called, but episode number it is, but it's called 11 Ideas to Design Your Morning Routine. 11 Ideas to Design Your Morning Routine. And we go deep into 11 different ways, things that you can add into your morning routine. So I'll hit these at a high level, I'll hit six or seven of them, but you can go back to that episode and there's a deep dive on all 11. So, One way to design your morning routine is to say, I'm not going to look at my phone for the first 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes. For me, it's an hour. I started with 20 minutes. It was a really tough transition. But when I realized I was going to the outside world before stabilizing on my inner foundation that like I needed to make a shift, I said, okay, for 20 minutes, I'm going to do something else. Well, what did I replace that with? The second idea is meditation. Third idea, exercise. Fourth idea, doing breathing exercises, breathwork techniques, like with Wim Hof. 
Fifth idea is journaling, either writing in a journal or audio journaling, which is something that I picked up recently. Another idea, step number or an idea number six would be creating something. Instead of consuming something, what about writing a blog post? What about making a meal? What about painting? What about building something with your hands? Or a seventh idea would be connecting to your spiritual practice. Prayer, reading the Quran, reading the Bible. Um, like it's, maybe your meditation practice is spiritual. Maybe it's an interconnected practice. Maybe it's a loving kindness meditation. Anything that's you know, spiritually fulfilling that connects you to a higher sense of self or higher than yourself, right? A, great, a, pow a power greater than yourself. These are all things that you can do before launching into social media, emails, text messages, lesser paths over the course of a lifetime that they could take you off your path. That's drifting. And what we want to do is give you a sense of command and control first thing in the morning. So to summarize this, right, a powerful morning routine does three things for you. Number one, it gives you a daily sense of control. Number two, it gives you clarity, focus, and confidence as you move throughout your day. And number three, fewer peaks and valleys over the course of the day. And the three steps to designing your morning routine are, number one, commit to a time frame, whether it's 10 minutes, 30 minutes, or 60 minutes. Number two, commit to a trial period. Do this for seven days, one month, 90 days, whatever feels energizing to you. And then once that happens, then start to construct what that period of time looks like for you in the morning. And I know for me that over these past few years, as I've developed my morning routine, it feels a lot like what W.H. Auden said from the book Daily Rituals. Routine in an intelligent man is the sign of ambition. When I got really clear on what I wanted from this life and how I wanted to show up every single day, I recognized the importance of a morning routine. And so I decided to design one and implement one and at first, it required some discipline and willpower, and it required some frustration. And I think some of the, uh, like the energy burn that comes from any new change, like when you're trying to establish a new habit, so it wasn't exactly easy for me. But now it requires no discipline or willpower. My morning routine is so sacred. It's something I look forward to every single day. And it ebbs and flows based on the demands of the day. Sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's longer. It used to be rigid. I used to do the same things all the time until that became boring. And then I recognized that I could actually get creative with it and let it flow. Some days I do meditation in the morning. Sometimes I don't. Some days it's breath work. Sometimes it's journaling. Being able to understand all the different levers that I can pull so that I can show up every single day feeling like I've got what I need to feel clear, confident, and focused throughout the day has been a gift. And I do believe that that's a sign of ambition. And many of my clients who want to show up the best versions of themselves take their morning routines quite seriously as well. So for you, presumably, as you're in this quarantine lockdown era, more and more of your days are feeling pretty similar. You're not running around and doing quite as much. This is the time to establish and design a morning routine. And if you're someone who likes to do something with other people, then call one of your buddies Ask them to listen to this episode and then spend 20 minutes designing your morning routines and then establish a check-in process after it's over to say, boom, done, did it today, right? Like this is a great way to find accountability and support and to enroll one of your other friends, right? Remember when I talked about in last week's episode, are you brave enough to lead your friends? Well, this is a perfect opportunity to lead one of your friends into a deeper sense of purpose and connection by establishing a morning routine. Do him the service of being the first mover and presenting this to him as the both of you are discovering and living the great man within. Is there someone that you know who needs to hear this episode? Maybe you have a client or a prospect who needs to hear it, or maybe a best friend or maybe a parent there is someone that you know who needs to hear it. You know, I do a lot of coaching on a lot of different topics. I got to tell you, when it comes to the morning routine stuff, there are very few things that catch on so quickly that give someone a benefit so fast and they remember who taught them about that. So if you are someone 
who would like to light up someone else and maybe help them with reestablishing control or command or confidence in their daily life, send this episode to them. They'll benefit from it. They will remember you. And especially right now when everyone's being inundated with negative news, you could be a lighthouse shining your light on them, helping them to see a better future for themselves.